Hey, this is Dave DeVoe. Would you like to access private capital so that you can buy more properties and scale your real estate business? Then check out my brand new podcast. It's called The How to Raise Capital 101 Show. Now, the first nine episodes are a mini course on how to raise six figures in a matter of weeks and seven figures in a matter of months, even if you're starting from scratch. So you can find this new show. Again, it's called The How to Raise Capital 101 Show wherever you listen to podcasts. Or feel free to visit us at RaiseCapital101Show.com. Hey everyone, Dave DeBow here, Property Profits Real Estate Podcast. Are you familiar with Section 8 properties? You've probably heard of them. You might be somewhat familiar with them, but you probably have no idea how lucrative this investment niche can really be. And our today's guest, Rhett Wiseman, is going to walk us through this, show us exactly what it's all about and what's in it for you as a real estate investor and how you can do well by doing good. So, Rhett, welcome. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. All right. So let's just back up big picture. What the heck is Section 8 in the first place? And and you're going to have to, you know, realize that some of our followers are in Canada, so we might, it might be a different language here, but in general, what, what does it mean? Yeah, so Dave, Section 8 is is a program uh, backed by the U.S. government, which basically allows people in the United States who are in the poverty level or are in the very low income socioeconomic group to afford to live in private homes. So um, investors can buy property and then they can rent that property out to uh, people who are in the Section 8 program get them out of the projects, people who can't afford to pay rent, people who can't afford to buy food. um, And and it allows investors at the same time to have a guaranteed source of rent every single month paid for by the U.S. government. All right. So just I'm just looking at the thinking about this. So typically, who are Section 8 clients? Who are the kind of people that are getting these subsidies or these benefits from the government? Yeah. So in almost every single case, Dave, the, the, the main applicants that we see are single mothers, single fathers with multiple kids earning less than $25,000 a year um, in areas with really high populations and really low commerce and, and really um, high unemployment rates. All right. That, uh, that makes sense. So is there kind of a stigma that you're dealing with the, you know, this is definitely not PC to say it, but you're kind of dealing with the, the bottom level financially of society uh, that, that if you're doing this, you're going to be kind of like a slum lord. that you're going to have to be getting really cheap properties that you can make any money on these, these kind of deals. It, it, it just kind of conjures up, at least in, in my uneducated mind about this, a lot of negatives. So what, what do you, what, what's your point of view on that? Well, it's a very educated mind you have, Dave, because it's a great question. Now, you know, the biggest thing that I run into over and over and over again are people that say, Rhett, I don't want anything to do with it because my parents told me this or because my financial advisor told me this. And the truth about it is, Dave, the stigma is so real. People don't want to be slumlords. They don't want to have tenants in units that are going to destroy everything, right? Um, But The reality is the program is set up to incentivize landlords. So there's a lot of myths. There's a lot of things that are untrue about the program. For example, if you have a tenant in a unit and they destroy the unit, they will, they lose their section eight voucher forever. So they can never rent in a section eight home again. That's number one. There are periodic inspections as well, um, where a section eight inspector will go to property that they currently live in. If they find drugs, alcohol, people living there that aren't on the lease, again, they lose their voucher forever and they immediately get removed from the property. So as a landlord, you're incentivized, hey, let's get these people in. We can provide a really nice home, a really nice opportunity for them while they're, they have to take care of your property also. And another thing too, that's extremely important is you're held accountable. I know you said the word slumlord, and that's something we talk about on my channel all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, because unfortunately, when you buy a lot of Section 8 properties, you run into a lot of slumlords. One of the things about the program is, and they're getting really, really strict on this, which I think is great, 
when inspectors go to the property to make sure that everything's up to par and that, and that um, you know, the tenants are taking care of your property, they're also seeing how good of a job you're doing at, at being a landlord. So they're saying, okay, are all the smoke detectors working in here? Is it safe? Are the doors able to lock? Are there vents in the bathroom? Can these windows open? Um, are, there, are there fire plans in place? So there are a lot of aspects uh, that, that are what I like to call symbiotic as far as the te uh, tenant and landlord um, relationship. Okay, very cool. So I guess the question that I have as well is, uh, or uh, and perhaps another stigma or worry people might have as a landlord is okay if, if I work with these kind of properties, these kind of Section Eight properties. It's kind of like rental control, isn't it? Like there's a cap on how much I can charge. How am I, you know, especially in these expensive markets? How am I supposed to go in, buy a quote unquote decent property, uh, rent it out, and then be stuck with these tenants that I can't get rid of or I can't. I can't get market rent for those properties. So how does that work? Another great question, Dave. So you said a key word there, buying properties in expensive areas, right? We don't do that. And, and, yeah. and you're hundred percent right. So the, the U S government sets a cap for every zip code in the United States of what the maximum amount of money that HUD or the department of housing and urban development can pay for a section eight tenants rent. I know that was a mouthful, but um, so in order to do that, we can look at that number and we can say, okay, this is the top of what we can get paid per month. In order for that to be profitable for us, we need to make sure that our acquisition cost is X. If we know the max rent we can get is Y. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to be going into Manhattan and trying to buy a single family home and rent it to a section eight tenant. We're not going to be going into Hollywood Hills and trying to do the same thing. There are certain markets around the US that we can buy properties for 20, 30, 40, 50,000 dollars and put a tenant in those units that rent it out at $1,000 a month and have all that money be guaranteed. So when, when you're investing in Section 8, it's extremely important to find the right market and the right zip code as well and, and make sure that those th two things can work so you can be profitable. Wow, that's another fantastic idea. Hold on to that thought for a sec. We'll be right back. Now, are you a real estate investor? who's ran out of cash or credit to grow your portfolio? Are you looking to grow your portfolio using other people's money and raising capital? Well, I wanna show you how to raise six figures or more in six weeks or less at my upcoming Investor Attraction Workshop. You can get your ticket and find out all about it at InvestorAttractionWorkshop.com. We're gonna spend a full day taking a deep dive into this roadmap that I've used to raise millions for my deals and I've helped other people just like you cumulatively raise hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars for their deals as well. So again, you can check that out at InvestorAttractionWorkshop.com. And as a loyal listener to the podcast, you'll get 50% off your ticket when you use the discount code PODCAST. That's right. Discount code PODCAST at InvestorAttractionWorkshop.com. See you at the next workshop. So if, if that's the parameters, then isn't it kind of like we're dealing with clientele and properties that are quote unquote in the hood? So that's another good question. To a point, yes. Now we stay out of areas that are very high crime because regardless of what area that you're from, if you're a mother with single, uh, you're a single mother with kids or a single father with kids, you're not going to want to subject your kids to those environments either. So we are going for properties that are in um, lower income areas that are lower acquisition costs, but at the same time, we're finding the best usually, and usually in real estate, Dave, you always try to get the worst house on the best street. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get the, you know, the, the best house on the best street in that neighborhood. Um, we're trying to get the top of the market. We're trying to set the standard for that neighborhood. And, you know, we go a little, we go a little further. Um, as far as, you know, I've been in this for, for almost a decade now. And when I started getting into this, I said, how can I set myself aside from this? So what I started doing was I started putting things in units that other people wouldn't. I wanted to set, separate myself from the slumlord mentality and the slumlord stigma. Right. So I'd spend more money. I'd spend an extra $5,000 to finish hardwood floors. I'd spend an extra, you know, X amount of dollars on brand new appliances and, and more money on, on this kind of paint and this kind of roof to make sure that it was a really, really nice place to live. I took pride in that. And I wanted my tenants to take pride in that also. Um, 
I had being from Boston, I'd never seen poverty like I have in, in down South where I live down now. Um, and, and being able to provide a nice home for people who have less than I do and who might be coming out of an awful situation in projects where they're living with thousands and thousands of other people in a 400 square foot unit that's infested with cockroaches, right? So to, to create a really nice living environment for somebody it gives people a chance to get out of that situation. I took a lot of pride in. Yeah, most definitely. So what would you say, Rhett, are the big, let's say the top three pros or benefits of becoming a Section 8 investor? Right. So number one, guaranteed cash flow every single month. You know, a large portion well, of that. Guaranteed rent. Your, your rents definitely get paid every month. It's the government, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and the government has shown that, you know, when things go bad, they just print more money. So you don't have to worry about being, you know, them running out of money. So that's number one. Number two is the low acquisition cost. It's so, so hard today in the United States with real estate prices to find property that is, is under $100,000, never mind under 50,000, under 40,000, right? So getting into that is just insane. But the, the most important aspect of this for me, and I've lived this, Dave, Section 8 investing is one of the only things that I've seen that is recession proof. I've had a Section 8 portfolio through two government shutdowns, a mini recession at the beginning of COVID, March 2020, and a global pandemic. And the only thing that's happened throughout all of those dire circumstances is my portfolio has gone up in value. And I just can't say that about any other kind of asset or, or equity or investment that I've made. Very cool. Very interesting. So, Red, um, when it comes to these kind of properties, how does it, because you're, you're dealing with the government, they're paying the bills, they're making the rules. How does it work with inflation, cost of living? Basically, how do you raise the rent on these kind of properties if you're kind of locked in with the government? Yeah, another great question. You guys watching, you guys see how smart Dave is. He, he, he knows about this and he's just pulling it all out of me. He's fantastic. So great. So every year, Dave, we file for a rental increase at three to five percent every single year. So the government allows you to file a rent increase every single year on your property. Now, just like anything else, markets go up, markets go down. And Congress is actually the one that negotiates the price that HUD is allowed to pay for Section 8 rentals. So every year, every two years, that budget is negotiated and the rates actually fluctuate in those markets. So if 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 HUD is seeing that in your particular market or your area, the market rents are going up, then Section 8 continues to go up with that market rate. Um, and they do that because if Section 8 sees and the US government sees that nobody in a particular zip code, no landlord is willing to rent out to Section 8 tenants there because they're getting way more money for cash tenants, they're going to have no affordable housing in that whole zip code. And that's a huge problem, especially with the homelessness that's affecting the US right now. Yeah. So. Very recently, we're seeing incredible, incredible um, uh, rent increases by HUD to make sure that Section 8 is able to keep up with incentivizing landlords to maintain um, a relationship with the program. Very cool. Well, I could ask you a gazillion questions because this is fascinating. That's for sure, Rhett. But we've got a limited amount of time. I'm sure this has piqued a lot of people's interest. So if folks want to find out more about you know, Section 8, investing they want to find out more about you i believe you've got a book that you've written about this how can people find out more about rhett wiseman yeah dave well i appreciate that so you can come over to my youtube page it's rhett wiseman the section eight guy um and underneath all my videos there's contact information and, and links to my book and links to other things um and uh you know i welcome anybody that listens to you is 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 more than welcome on my channel i appreciate that very much well this has been a lot of fun thank you for opening my eyes and our eyes to a, a new concept and showing us some of the big benefits of this. So again, you guys, if you're interested in finding out more, uh, the links will be in the show notes below this episode. Brett, thank you very much. Thanks for having me, Dave. All right, everybody, take care. We'll see you on the next episode. Well, hey there, thanks for tuning into the Property Profits podcast. If you like this episode, that's great. Please go ahead and subscribe on iTunes, give us a good review. That'd be awesome. I appreciate that. And if you're looking to attract investors and raise capital for your deals, 
I'm going to invite you to get a complimentary copy of my newest book right back there. There it is. The Money Partner Formula. You can get a PDF version at InvestorAttractionBook.com. Again, InvestorAttractionBook.com. Take care.